Last video I showed you guys how critical subsonic is. So now today I'm gonna go ahead and explain how to know where to set your subsonic without knowing where to place it. So pretty much what I would say is start with turning your subwoofer all the way up and then this is how you're gonna do this test. So hopefully by the end of this video, this can help show you maybe this is a tool or way that you can use to know how to set on your amplifier your correct location to set your subsonic filter without knowing where to do the math or set the um, tuning to a certain spec. So it's a lot easier to do this on a ported enclosure like my single 10 inch build than it is to do it on a bandpass fourth order or sixth order. But the same concept you can use for a sealed enclosure, bandpass enclosure, eighth order, sixth order, fourth order, ported enclosure, even um, to an extent you can do it on free air, but it's a lot harder. So what I'm gonna be doing in this video is pretty much showing you, hey, this is the test I'm doing to tune my amplifier subsonic to where my subwoofer is protected and not bottoming out pretty much in general summary. So let me go ahead and grab my tool. It's not the prettiest tool, but it works. It's just a little gauge that I use to adjust my tuning settings on my amplifier. So we're gonna be messing with the subsonic. So here's what I'm gonna start with. So like I mentioned earlier, I'll start with it all the way up. So depending on what your tuning is, if you don't know the tuning of your enclosure, this is an easy way to know the tuning of your enclosure as well. So what I'm gonna be using is just a Bluetooth device or um, frequency device um, test tones. So I have different test tones from 15 Hertz all the way up to 32 Hertz. Normally that's gonna be the bandwidth range that I start with and then I'll move up from there if I need to. So I'm gonna start with 32 Hertz and I have my volume up to three quarter volume, almost full tilt. Uh, you don't want full tilt, but around three quarter volume max for this. So, so what I'm doing is I have it all the way off right now or all the way up and you're gonna see how the subwoofer reacts. So what I'm about to do is I'm gonna pretty much change the subsonic slowly until I notice the subwoofer starts to bottom it out. So watch, watch how the subwoofer reacts to this and use this concept for your own build. So we're gonna see. So I'm not doing nothing but moving this. So what I did there was I noticed the excursion is a lot less obviously with that. So it didn't bottom out with the subsonic all the way off. So I know I'm protected at that volume level. So let me go ahead and turn it down to the next volume. So now I started at 32. Now I'm going to go to 28 hertz. So slowly turn down the volume or the, the different uh, frequency responses until you notice your sub starting to bottom out or pretty much get to Matt's excursion, which is very dangerous at a subsonic level. So, all right. So we're going to see how it does with the next one. Here we go. All right, so that one did a little bit more excursion as you noticed. So I know I'm getting about to my limit. So it's 28 Hertz. That's normally about close to my limit. And that was with the subsonic at about three quarters from being off. So when I did that, I noticed that my excursion on my subwoofer was getting almost to where I, do, I don't feel comfortable with it. So that's another thing that I have to notice that I realize that my subsonic is very important for how I set it. But I know I can play down to 28 Hertz with no problem in this enclosure. But that's gonna vary on how much power output as well as the song. That's why you do these tests at around three quarter volume where you know you're gonna not go to that over that limit too much too often. So my last test and then I'll be done. So I'm gonna go ahead and do 23 Hertz. So this one is gonna most likely show you this is how you know you're bottoming out probably in this one. So enjoy. <laughs> All 
right, so I knew I was bottoming out. I noticed that the subwoofer was getting to about the limit without me turning it up more. I know if I turned the, uh, my iPod up more, it would have got to a limit to where I know it was gonna bottom out. So I know my frequency response I can play down to is around 28 to 30 hertz, as well as I'm gonna set my subsonic back like the previous video with how I set my subsonic. So hopefully this test showed you how you can use your subsonic to set it to the appropriate volume level you need to test to see how you know your subwoofer is where it is going to need to be set so it doesn't bottom out and it's in protect pretty much safe mode. So hopefully this taught something. Uh, concepts there. So that's another thing that you can utilize. Maybe hopefully teach you something. I'm not perfect. If I do something wrong, let me know. And I'll see you on the next video. Jacob Ball out.